Hey, Youngstown Click, I am here at Coffee, Youngstown Coffee Company, right here in Boardman. And many of you may not, yep, see there, it's complete. Uh -huh. Right there. <laughs> many of you may have never heard of Youngstown Coffee Company. I know I have not, I did not. So I might be behind the times and everybody else knows, or maybe just you're about to find out about something new right here in town. So I'm about to introduce you to the team here and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and their titles and then we're gonna show you a little bit about um, what they do and the coffee. It's kind of growing, now they're in stores. So you're bound to see them if you haven't seen them yet. So um, we're gonna start with Tim, Tim Ferris. I'm, uh, I'm Tim Ferris, and I am uh, sales. I do sales at Youngstown Coffee Company. All right. <laughs> I'm Garrett Zarnicki. I am one of our roasters. Nice, nice. I'm Luke Foster. I'm the other coffee roaster. All right, the, <laughs> the other coffee roaster. All right. I'm Shane O'Faney. I work alongside Tim, and uh, I pretty much just prepare all the stuff for the roasting, and I handle all the stuff in the back end. I'm the office administrator. Nice, nice. So it's the, it's you guys four four. I mean, other than the people who work the counter and stuff like that, um, this is the the main team, right? This is the yes, crew. this is the crew. This is the crew. I love it. I love it. So now um, this is a part of the Havana House, correct? Correct. Okay. So tell me a little bit about how Youngstown Coffee Company came to be as it is right now. So we had originally been purchasing from another uh, coffee roaster about three four years ago. Okay. This grew had coffee for probably about 15 to 20 years. Wow. So Yeah, because coffee we, and cigars go just hand in hand, right? It's like the best combo. Yeah, so <laughs> right, okay. So the opportunity presented itself that we could uh, you know, just basically pick okay. up uh, pick up the roaster and pick up the business off when we actually just took the opportunity. We, uh, Luke and I trained and then uh, kind of took it over from there. Wow. We've run the business since to the point where we have upgraded our infrastructure, upgraded the space. So it's been a little bit of a journey. That's amazing. So. Um, obviously, you've had experience in business before the coffee company. Did you also have experience in business before the Havana House? I mean, like you guys are all, it's a pretty young crew. So did you just kind of like have this idea and wing it or did do one of you guys have a degree in business or where did you guys, you're all local boys. Let's start there. You're all local. Are all local yeah. boys. Okay. Okay. So how did this even come to be from the start? Just a quick. Tony Bellotto. Tony yeah, Bellotto, Tony the owner Bellotto. is a serial entrepreneur. He has his okay. and everything. I think one of the big catalysts was also uh, Luke's cold brew, oh, if you want to see that. Oh, okay. Uh, I've been working behind the counter at the Nile Savannah for like eight years. Okay. And just out of boredom, and sheer boredom, I started blending coffees together and brewing them cold just to see what I could get. And I ended up coming, with a cold, coming up with a cold brew blend that we would serve on tap, and it got to the point where we were buying so much of it, and it was about the time that Jay was planning to retire that... Oh, okay. We just kind of decided to get into the game. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. Oh, that's awesome. So you're like a natural born chemist. <laughs> 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 All right. So tell us a little bit about Coffee Company. Can we see? You guys just bought a roaster, right? Youngstown Coffee Company. Yeah. Um, so can we see Absolutely. in there? Yeah. Kind of take yeah. us take us a little bit. So I never knew you guys were here. You're right here in the Boardman Plaza, right in the back of. But can people, uh, to buy the coffee, they just come into the Havana house yeah, they they buy the store and buy to it. buy a cup of coffee or something? Okay. All right, so this is where all the action takes place, right here. And you said this is a brand new roaster? Yes. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, so tell us how it works. All right, so we've got this big vacuum up here that sucks the beans up, and once we turn it off, it stops pulling a vacuum and it drops beans in the hopper. Uh, there's actually beans in this right now. Okay. Uh, it holds about 55 pounds, generally. It's about the most we can do at a time. Uh, okay, and you get your beans from uh, around the world. They said you do single origin yep. and, okay. We've got a couple single origin. We do a couple good blends. We have some flavored coffees that we do. Um, single origins, we probably got seven to 10 different wow. single origins. Wow, wow. Okay. All right. So then, okay. So it goes in here and then where does it roast? It roast in there like a fire or something? Yeah, it's inside of here. Uh, this okay. is a big steel drum. It's got fins on the inside that, you know, sift and turn the coffee. Okay. It sits above, you can kind of see it over here. It's easier to see when the machine's turned on. Yeah. It sits above a, uh, a just a bed of flames. It's a gas burner. It's a wow. Bed. 
keeps the drum as it turns. Um, now, yeah. now it um it matters how like it has to be probably right at a temperature so the beans don't burn. Is that like so it's all like a it's carefully crafted, I mean I would imagine, right? Oh yeah. Have yeah. you ever burned beans? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, our, in our old roaster maybe a time or two. Okay. <laughs> When we first started, there, there may have been a couple of beans. <laughs> I feel like that's what I would do. I would accidentally burn the beans. On well, that, little, that little wooden thing there, too, you can pull it out. You can check the, the color of the beans. To make oh, sure. yeah, okay. We pull a little scoop of beans just right directly out of Wow. Them. Now, when people say dark roast as opposed to light roast, is it because it spends more time in the roaster? Correct. Yes. Okay. So the same original bean can be a dark roast or a light roast? Absolutely. So we uh, we actually have a, a single origin Nicaraguan espresso. And we also serve a single origin Nicaraguan. So we have two different uh, uh, roast profiles for it. But okay. it's the same bean, it's just you're going to pull out a little, little bit of a different characteristic. The darker wow. you go, the more of the roast you're going to taste. Okay. Whereas with something a little bit lighter, you're going to taste more so what the actual bean is presented. Got it. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Actually, visual representation here. Oh, yay, 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 yay. This is what I like. Okay. The inside scoop, literally, huh? Oh, yes. So this is going to be an espresso roast. Obviously, it's a different bean from the Brazilian. Okay. Which these are these are actually tougher to pick <gasps> because they're... Oh. Look these at are that. really big beans. <laughs> yeah, they are. Look at that. And that's a Brazilian? Uh, this is that's a Brazilian. A Brazilian? And okay. this is going to be the espresso. Oh, that smells amazing. Goodness gracious. Wow. But yeah, um, tell, you're better at explaining the crack than I am. The crack, the crack of the be of the bean. The, the yeah. first crack and the second crack. Yeah. Wow, so, this whole thing is like so intricate. So at, at some point in time, closer to the end of the roast right process, uh -huh. uh, we hear what's the, the first crack. So it's actually the coffee has actually taken on so much heat or so much energy okay. at that point in time that it actually begins to expel that heat. So you hear cracks. It almost sounds like popcorn. Really. Coming out. So then after that, you can go a little bit darker. So like on espresso, we'll probably hear a second crack. Okay. Uh, typically, you're probably going to drop like something that's, you know, along these lines. That's going to be maybe moments after the first after crack. the first crack. Okay. Whereas, you know, if we get into the, the espresso, that's when we're getting to the point where wow. we've hit second crack. We're rolling through. We're starting to pull a lot of the oil out of it. Oh, okay. So the darker, the less oil. The darker, the more oil. The more oil. Oh, I see. So you're just extracting it and from the beans. It's, it's essentially just coming out on its own. Okay, got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, now, what about, the, the, does the color have anything to do with the amount of a, the actual caffeine that's in a bean? It does. Yeah. So, uh, the darker uh, the roast, oh, okay. the more caffeine you cook out of it. Yeah. Oh. So, typically, when people come in, they go, like, what's your strongest? And they're yeah. thinking that, like, the darker the bean, the more caffeine, but it's actually the inverse. If you want a nice morning pick-me-up, you want to go with a lighter bean or a lighter roast. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. I, <laughs> I, I am like, I am, wow. I, that, wow. That surprises me. Huh. It blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Still uh, so like, no, 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 no. What you don't understand is right. it's got to be strong. Like, oh, oh my you. goodness. <laughs> that is so fascinating. Are there any other like common myths or facts or something that you find um, surprises a lot of people? Um, most people don't know that coffee comes from a cherry, and that cherry is perfectly edible. It's the seed from the inside of a small cherry. It's actually part of the world the company. What, what color is the cherry? Oh, uh, it's red. It's red. Okay. Yeah, it's... And you could eat the whole thing? Uh, I would, I would treat it like an actual cherry. I imagine it would be like, a, like a, a cherry. With oh, the, the so the, the, yeah. the seed that you pop out would be the coffee bean. That is so fast. So, did you guys hear the story about the um, how the goats discovered coffee? Yeah. I heard that story. That's kind of cool, too. How they had all kinds of energy. That's like uh, Is that like a myth, or is that real? Uh, that I'm not sure of, but I knew Kathy Luak. What, what kind of animal eats it? It's, 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 it's a kind of yeah. retail lemur. It's a yeah. It's, it's, it's like one of the most expensive coffees, but it's lemur poop. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> ew, ew. <laughs> That's disgusting. The, en the enzymes in its stomach do something composition of the coffee and gives it some unique flavor that's $50 a pound or how much Oh my goodness. Man. Okay. <laughs> okay, speaking of the price, 
Um, why are some coffees more expensive than others? I mean, uh, I know that people say, oh, it's from a volcanic region and blah, blah, blah. Is that, is that? A lot of the time it, it is regional. It might be crop production. Uh, a lot of the time altitude plays, pays, or, uh, plays a part. Yeah. Plays a part. Thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's actually grown higher altitude. So a lot of times somebody has to go and harvest it by hand on possibly the side of a mountain. So Got at that it. point in time, you know, it's going to cost a little bit more instead of, you know, having to go through. And it also depends on whether it's, you know, harvested by hand. Is it bird friendly? It there's actually bird friendly coffee. Because typically all the time they have uh, machines. So they'll plant coffee in rows. Okay. They have an armature that comes down, grabs all the trees and just shakes them. Well, this disrupts the birds, but you uh, harvest a lot of coffee at one point in time. So also you're playing, it. you know, kind of looking at whether it's, it's hand harvested. Is it machine harvested? Is it wow. mass production? Or is it in, like an estate grow? There's some small limited estates that may have a really good coffee. And right. And just do small batch production on that. Okay. And now have... And you did... I see that. I see, yes. The bird is a part of the logo. Have you guys gotten to visit any of the places that you get the, the coffee from? The farms and stuff? Have you done any of that yet? This guy just got back from somewhere. But did you visit any coffee farms out there? <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I actually didn't visit any coffee farms out there. Um, How was the coffee over there in Tanzania? Um, surprisingly, the like the coffee favorite over there, it's called Insta Cafe. It's instant, and it's instant coffee, and it's honestly the best coffee, instant coffee that I've that I've ever it's had. Like it was Karen. delicious. What it was, was it? Best cafe? No, it's not. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you were drinking chocolate, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, but, you know, Oh man. Okay, so um since this is part of uh Havana House, can we go up there real quick and kinda just do a quick Of course. I know Absolutely. that there's customers, like I'll try not to get Yes, a testing would be great. Uh, uh tasting, yes. Uh, <laughs> testing, tasting, <laughs> something like that. Okay. This is so multi. So, guys, we're trying the Nicaragua, uh, Ethiopian, Ethiopian Yurgacha. And it is so multifaceted. We're doing a coffee taste. So, cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is a little acidic. So, so, you see how, yeah. It is, definitely. Definitely. Um, very multi-faceted. How would you describe it? As far as, okay, let's look at the flavor profiles. Yeah, yeah. So there is acidity, body, flavor, and finish, just like he just said. So the acidity, how would you describe the acidity? You're the expert, so what would you? For a medium to dark roast, it is surprisingly acidic, but it's not, it doesn't really have a bite to it. Yeah, it does not have a bite. It flows. It's very smooth, better. very smooth, I think. Yeah. Is that a terminology, smooth? Smooth. No. <laughs> we have dull. 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 I wouldn't say it's dull. No. It's got. A, like you, you mentioned the word bright earlier. It mm -hmm. has a vibrance to yeah. it. Definitely a vibrance because it, it, it makes your mouth like know that there's flavor in it. Right. 
It's a it's a happy coffee. Well, it's a happy so coffee. That, yes. That moves on the body, and the body is how we describe the feel of the coffee in the mouth. Yeah, like so. Do you taste like anything? It's not words? heavy. It's not heavy. Yeah. So there's watery, thin, slender, tea-like, powdery, round, buttery, creamy, thick, chewy, and rich. Chewy? Is there a chewy, chewy coffee that was we not chewy? We haven't tried a chewy coffee. You only get to have a slice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I'd say there's a little bit of oil there at the end. Like it's it's a bit greasy. That's, yeah, that, maybe. That's a bad mm -hmm. word. No, yeah, yeah, but, oily. Yeah, it's, it's the flavor brown. lingers. The flavor lingers. It doesn't just up and go. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I would what say. You, dude, sound so smart right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you're rich. It doesn't taste buttery, buttery but it, like oily. Yeah. That kind of like. Yeah, just the texture itself is buttery. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. smooth like butter. For sure. Hey, I said smooth, and it's butter, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so now what's this one? That is the Brazilian Dolce. Ooh, okay, so do I? It's going to be a bit lighter of a roast, so. Have a so yeah, this one like. does, it's sitting on my tongue, but not in a bad way. Right. Like I would feel like a fulfilled, if I had a cup of this, well, me, I would feel happy. Let me get you a fresh one. Okay, and on a side note, guys, look what they gave me. I can't wait to see what's inside. <laughs> Look how cool. I'm so excited. And they have Cinnabon coffee, Highlander, Grog. Yes. Oh, by the way, I saw that um, Viking blood over there. He said that that's mead is like the one of the oldest forms of of alcohol. Mead, and, yeah. So yeah. mead is kind of, it's like wine, but okay. instead of grapes, you use honey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Viking blood. Which is funny because I just I developed a flavor, orange flavor that I'm gonna release for the holidays, and it's called Tiger's Blood. Oh, you serious? Yeah. Of uh, coffee? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be interesting. There you go. So All that's right. The Brazilian. Okay. Now people can order this online, correct? Correct. That's okay. currently available on the site. It's okay. got a nice green label. Okay. So. At Youngstown Coffee. Oh. At Youngstown <laughs> Coffee. Dot com. Now, what are the ranges as far as like per pound? Per pound. Yeah, I mean, what would you say, like six ninety nine to twenty ninety nine, or nineteen ninety nine, or what would be a range? Um, so the sixteen ounces that we have right now on the site are going for sixteen dollars, even not including okay. tax shipping. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. you know, if you order it online and you choose in store pickup, we can have it available for you, no problem. Oh, at any of the Havana houses, uh, well, or just this, this one particular? At this okay. one particular on roast nights, which is tonight. We'll okay. Give you a sneak peek of that too. Oh yeah. But okay. Luke can take it over to the Havana house over in Niles, and we can have it ready for you there as well. Oh, also, okay. uh, local right. delivery. How far out is the local delivery? It's a thirty mile radius. Thirty mile radius. So if you're hmm. within thirty miles of Boardman Havana House, we'll that's bring it to so your door. great. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and that <laughs> that is so great. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting in my office working. Yeah. Like, I just need somebody to bring me some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> We would actually but, love to almost like Uber Eats or something. We'd love to uh, do that eventually. Yeah, for sure. Even uh, just like coffee specifically. Yeah, man, that would be great. Yeah. It's in the works. It's in the works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how about this is Brazilian? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, and let's do this one real quick. Yeah. Would you like them? Yeah. Okay. Because you're still drinking the Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. So this one is not as uh, flavorfully diverse. It's more like a focused flavor. Um, like this Ethiopian one had like 20 flavors. No, not 20, but like, you know, hit your mouth. This one is more, yeah. This one's not as complex. The Ethiopian, well, the, I'm sorry, the Brazilian, it doesn't have pack as much of a punch in the beginning, but as it goes down, it kind of has. Yeah. It has like a roasty. Body. It's more roasty. Yeah, than the, the other one. Which is surprising because it is a lighter roast, but it, it almost tastes darker. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Interesting. It's more thing focused. About the Brazilian is any of our flavors. Uh, we, as our base, we use Brazilian. So anytime you have any of our flavors, it's usually Brazilian. It could be Colombian as well, but Got it. And most you guys, of the time it's... It's usually Brazilian if there is an overroast of Colombian because they have a similar profile. We blend those together and then we okay. add the flavor to them. 
Okay, so you guys infuse the flavor yourself. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's so cool to be able to. So the tiger's blood, you said it's like an orange flavor? It is an orange flavor. I have some in the back if you want to see it. Okay, but so it's like um, like, like grapefruity or specifically orange? It's specifically orange. Because I've, I've had coffee with grapefruit notes, but never orange. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, so it's, a, it's from flavor development. It's our R&D department's been working on it. <laughs> but, <laughs> I love it. I love but, uh, it. It's got uh, the concentrated orange, so it's all natural. Wow! But, like, oh, good. Once you open the bag, it just smells like orange. Oh, it's, it's amazing! amazing. <laughs> it's really wow! Cool. We got oh. a couple of different flavors. Tiger's blood is the orange. Okay. We got black currant. Uh, for the holidays, we have eggnog and marshmallow. What? Oh, I could see those being huge. <laughs> oh my goodness! You guys should um, take it down to. Uh, doesn't it uh, Buttermaid Bakery down the thing? Don't they have co serve coffee in their thing? Uh, Buttermaid, I have no That's idea. That, they're actually on my list. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I don't know since COVID, but they you, you used to be able to go in there and get a cookie, and then they have a little thing of coffee like that. That would be yeah. perfect. Oh, egg, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're trying to definitely like expand our outreach. Yeah. Companies that wanna like get on the. Youngstown Coffee Train. Oh, yeah. Seven. Youngstown Coffee Train. I love it. I love it. Okay, real quick. So while we're um, finishing this up, I like to ask all the people I interview, um, three local places, you know, <laughs> three no local places that, that uh, you would recommend outside of here, like some of the, your, place, your favorite places to frequent, maybe to eat, maybe to, uh, I don't know, get your oil changed. I mean, it could be anything that you're just like, you know, I'd like to shout out this. Oh, uh, sure. place. Yeah. Yeah. You go first. No. <laughs> <laughs> I totally am putting you on no. the spot. I would totally say uh, mm, Mission Taco has some of the best tacos I've ever tried in my life. Oh, okay. Um, I would also say I'm a huge nerd, so I really like going into the Exchange, which is more of an Ohio-based company. So, oh, they're really neat. Check them out. The Exchange is what books and CDs and uh, um, games they, and stuff. They got CDs, vinyls. They've got oh. uh, Blu-rays. They actually have some VHS tapes left really? over. Really? Somebody trades them in. Okay. That's the cool thing too is an Exchange. Oh, so yeah. You bring all your old stuff, action figures, whatever you want, and then they give you either credit or money. So, oh, that is so cool. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to find. Exactly. Oh, I, that's sweet. I worked there for a few years. It was really fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The things that people come up with, it would be sweet. Oh, yeah. Nobody knows what they have in their basement until yeah. they <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And a third one. I'm totally blanking. This is awful. That's um, okay. We <laughs> uh, check out Goodwill. No, I'm kidding. Um, Good. <laughs> How about the Havana House? Havana House, there Check you go. The I hear those guys are pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean, you know, all right. they're okay. <laughs> the, the, this is the Boardman location and then the Niles location. Okay. You know, so we have like different liquors and stuff, like not liquor, I'm sorry, but beer and wine. Yeah. And at the one in Niles, they actually have a permit to serve. So you can actually go in there and have a oh. glass of wine and a cigar. Oh, okay. So they actually yeah. serve it there. Okay. Exactly. Oh, he should be on a commercial. He's like, yep. With that, <laughs> okay. All right, Tim, your turn. Okay. Um, so first place to eat, my favorite place to eat. Um, now this isn't in Youngstown or that, Bowling County. That doesn't. No, that's okay. Uh, but Trumbull County, because yeah. you know, yeah. Trumbull County. Yeah. I would say uh, Margaritas in Girard has mm -hmm. amazing food. Really, Margaret? Is that Mexican? Uh, it's Italian. Oh, margaritas. Yes, okay. margaritas in Italian. Uh, it's an Italian Ooh. joint in Girard. Uh, that sounds good. Right on 422. Never been there. Oh, man. You're okay. missing out. It's, okay. It's All delicious. right. So they haven't yeah. eaten there yet either. Really? Oh, so I've good. I've heard they're delicious. So oh, good. and I love authentic yeah. Italian. The food's like oh crack. It's so good. Okay. Um, Perfect. Next place Have would definitely be... <laughs> 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 next place would be Beautiful World. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Beautiful World in downtown Warren. Their smoothies are unbeatable, and uh, their paninis are really good, too. And just generally good people that own the business and work there. They're all great. So yeah, yeah. definitely check out Beautiful World if you're in downtown Warren. Yeah, second that. Um, and then third, I would say um, Save-A-Step in Girard 
Save a step. Save a step. What is it's that? just like a little convenience store, but everyone is so kind that works there. So <laughs> that ever, matters. That it, definitely it, it matters. Does. Yes. It does. So like, if you ever need to like go pack up a yeah. pack of cigarettes or something, just go to Save, save a Step. step. Give them your business because they're very nice. Oh, also shout out to Magic Tree and Maggie's Magic. Uh, Maggie's Magic Muffins. Both of them have magic in the title. Oh, you're right. They're awesome. Magic map. Uh, I, Marbles in my mouth. Magic muffins. <laughs> marbles. I actually, Magic marbles. I just had their caramel, salted caramel muffin. Oh, delicious. Okay. And then um, Magic Tree has like the most amazing entrees you could ever get. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they're really innovative too. Like we we sold coffee to them a while ago. Yeah. They haven't been back, so we're, we're waiting on you. But they had, uh, they had coffee <laughs> flights for a long time there, too. So oh, it was okay. kind of like what we're doing here. But yeah. it was like a bunch of different little shot glasses full of coffee. And you got to try your favorite. And oh, I like, love that. That's yeah. very cool. Okay. Well, I don't want to be smoking on <laughs> All right, guys. So you got to um, see the different kinds of coffee and definitely see how the different flavor profiles um, are kind of like uh, come out truly like it's not just another cup of coffee so definitely come by here we're gonna head back and I'm gonna show you some of the beans uh, roasting because you actually start roasting at night right so this is like the beginning of your normal yeah, roasting time 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. okay perfect yeah. so we're gonna head back there and watch uh, watch the beans roast alright guys so here we are in action we get to see this whole process take place so there's beans in oh yeah okay I see it in there Okay, so what's going on over here? So that's actually a batch of uh, Islander broccoli. Okay, and so what's this flavor with the beans? Okay. Oh, and that's how you how that's how you get the flavor in there. Ah, okay. And then what about this? This is also uh, a little bit of a backup for smaller batches to do, uh, just like a little bit of mixer. It's uh -huh. a deconditioned pizza dough mixer. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it I love. I love Oh, that's great. I know. <laughs> I'm just right. Here's the tiger's one. Oh. Wow. That is no joke. And it's all natural. I love what you said. It's all natural um, flavor. Yes. It's not an artificial flavor. Correct. That is. Wow. Oh, dude. You open that bag and you know you opened the bag. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that smells so good. Wow. Look at that. That's like his baby. You were holding it like your baby. Like <laughs> he loves it so much. <laughs> wow. I mean, they're Home Depot buckets. They're all sanitized. Yeah. Like, we're right? Yeah. So, uh, we're hoping to get ourselves, like, once we get the numbers up more and more, yeah. we're going to be moving into more facilities, getting more of these guys. Oh. Maybe even better, you know, storage options out there. So <laughs> we probably should have warned you, it's loud. No, that's it's great. So that's cool to see. I've never actually gotten to see it in action. Yeah, this is a, this is a spaceship right here. Wow. Well, what do you got in there? Coffee. 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 Coffee got it. That's... Coffee, right, right, right. Maybe a piece of popcorn. Is it familiar <laughs> or what? Yeah, so yeah. These guys in under here straight hands. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a I still smell that orange. Yeah. That coffee. I still smell that. What do you guys got in here? Ah, that's the marshmallow. Ah. You can actually smell the marshmallow. Maybe that's what, yeah, I smell like a whole greatness of flavor here. Here, let me go over here and show this real quick. Got 
Oh! Alright. Woohoo! Oh, look at that steam. You can feel the heat, too. As it gets dropped in, the rotation helps it cool off even faster. Okay, that's okay. So, right now it's just cooling off. Yeah. Wow. There's, there's some venting in a blower motor, so it's actually pulling air down. Oh. So all the smoke, everything, pretty much just goes back up through and through the HVAC. Oh, nice. So it's all ventilated very well. Look at those coffee beans, wow. How many pounds would you say that is? Right around 55 pounds. 55? And that's like a max, that's like the max yeah, capacity for a full load? Capacity, yeah. We can do about 225 pounds an hour. Wow. Wow. So how long from the time that you put the, the raw beans in to roasting? Like we got the tail end, but how long did that process take? So from green to roasted, depending on the actual roast profile you're going for, I'd say anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes. Oh, okay. It's relatively quick. Yeah, right. Wow. And before, like in regions that they don't have roasters and stuff, do they do that in the sun or something? Do they, do they, what was it? Um, I heard along, like, um, that people put them out in the sun and, and no, is that something that they do? They would, they would dry and process that way. Okay. Uh, more so you'll find people running basically like a steel drum over a fire. Okay, even, like okay. Got there, it. Uh, I mean, there's small hand ceramic roasters. Yeah, Got it. Ceramic pot does like four ounces of coffee at a time. <laughs> wow. I usually don't keep roasted coffee in my house. I keep it green and I just roast it as I need it. Are you serious? Yeah, those little ceramic coffee roasters are cool. Don't you figure out how to use them? Then it's literally the freshest coffee yeah, you can get. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. All right, so here's a question. You know this whole pour over craze, right? The pour over, the French press, the drip. What is your guys' um, method, preferred method, favorite method, personal, business, whatever? What's the way to make coffee? Oh, there's no the way. The way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what is it, what is it? Cold brew coffee, coffee that's brewed cold. Yeah. Easy, it's efficient, it's strong. You get a lot of caffeine out of it. It's smoother, it's less acidic. What's not to like? like that's, <laughs> How long does it take? If you're doing smaller batches, it's like overnight. Like, okay. you set your coffee up before you go to bed in a French press, and then when you wake up in the morning, just depress the, the French press, and you're ready to go. And um, do you drink? Do you heat it up to drink no, it? Hot? It's it's just always cold. So okay, so you drink it cold, you brew it cold, you drink it cold. Yep. And what the flavor? You so say the flavors just come out better like that. Yeah, you get you, you get more out of it. Yeah, you get more subtle nuances in the flavor. It's less bitter and less acidic, which is a big draw. Like it's okay. Just, it's a little bit smoother. And that so that would be a French press grind, like oh, a yeah. thick coarse grind. I usually do coarse grind for it. Okay. All right, and then okay. What about you? Is pour over the thing? I, I know some people, they, they, what do uh, you say? I'm, I'm more of an espresso kind of guy. Oh, okay, okay. Although I have access to it almost all the time, so right, I'm right. in that regard. <laughs> okay, all right. But second to that, pour over. Pour over. So why would pour over, I never understood, why would pour over be any better than drip? Uh, I mean, I, mean, I see people make it a big a, deal, but it's the same thing happening, right? Typically going with a finer grind, and it is very similar to drip. Okay. So a little more concentrated. Okay. Um, typically okay, you're so the like grind a, the grind is finer. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Typically, you're getting a little bit of a crispy, like crisper, cleaner cup out of it. Got Whereas it. Whereas if you were to do something like a French press, you're getting a full immersion. You get that kind of like 
syrupy All the oils body. and stuff. Okay. Especially, I, if I do make a French press, I use a fine grind, so I get like a little bit of a mud at the bottom of the cup, almost like a Turkish coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I personally like it that way. A lot of people really don't, but yeah. you get more parts per million of the actual coffee in there. So it does make a more dense, I suppose, more flavorful cup. But I just like something crisp and clean. Okay. And how do you strain it then? When if you with the fine grind and a French press, same thing. You just, just get down. that. You just you just get a little bit of like get a little, a little bit, bit of, of that. Soap. Okay, okay. Yeah, when I went to um, <laughs> I, I, I actually traveled over there and I kept asking for a cup of coffee and I kept getting this those little cups of Tur what I guess the Turkish coffee and I was like, no, I just want coffee. <laughs> you're doing it, you're like, There's nothing at the bottom of a cup. <laughs> it's like it was yeah, it was so big. It was. Uh, there's the chewy. There's, there's, yes, 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 yes. All right, what about you? Preferred coffee? Drip. Just drip. Just ten dollar coffee pot. Throw it there. Just plain coffee. All right. Regular coffee pots are slept on. Like you don't have to turn your nose up at it. Like it's good coffee. You don't yeah. have to coffee yeah. 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 If you put good coffee in it, you get yeah. good coffee. Yeah. There like, you go. You know, but also, you got to measure it out with like the coffee to water ratio. We get a lot of people being like, "This tastes really weak." It's like, well, you got to maybe put a little bit more oh, grind in there. Okay. Yes. Nice yes. Okay. What's your preferred way? Uh, if I'm gonna like take my time and enjoy, yeah, really enjoy it, it's definitely a French press, I would say. Okay. But, okay. Um, yeah, I'm with him with the whole drip coffee thing. That's how I drink mine every morning if I know, right. you know, wake up. <laughs> oh, so. Okay. <laughs> oh, very nice, very nice. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, thank thank you for taking it. Oh yeah, no it's problem. Nice this is good. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you guys. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> guys, thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this, and most importantly, I hope that you come out here and try Youngstown Coffee Company. Order it online. Send it as a gift. That's a perfect uh, Christmas gift. To send to people out of town, maybe somebody who's from the area but has moved out. It's a nice little uh, touch of Youngstown. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being the best part of what makes Youngstown click. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you next time.